Hey guys, so today I have swatches of the Zoya Bloom Collection for spring 2024. There are six new polishes here all together, so I will link the Zoya website down below because these are available right now. Six polishes and I will get into the swatches. So the first polish is called Hyacinth and this is described as a sweet yet delicate candy pink with micro fine holographic pink and white glitter. Okay, so this is more clear based, so it is very sheer on that first coat. There is a good amount of that shimmer in there, but it doesn't apply very evenly. You can see it's like very chunky looking. It's hard to tell that it's uneven here because the base is so sheer, but after we get going, you can really see that it's not super even. I would say that this could also make a good topper alternatively, but I'm not sure that it would be a good topper either just because the distribution of all that glitter is just kind of chunky. So the second coat here still does not apply very smoothly. You can really feel it's kind of like it's fighting me is what it felt like. It felt like the polish was fighting me. I had to do this like little tapping at the end of my nail to try to get everything to cover evenly. And it was still not entirely opaque. I could see my nail line pretty well. I did do a third coat kind of for science, but it's not something that I would recommend doing with this polish. All of these finishes seem to dry really slowly for me. So I feel like three coats would Unless you had a really good quick dry top coat that could get through all three layers, I feel like you might have a bit of a goopy issue if you did three coats of this one. That being said, the For Science third coat did cover everything completely, but again, it was just so much polish and so lumpy at this point that I really would not recommend doing a third coat here. I was really struggling to try to smooth it out and touch it up. And also for this final clip here, I usually always show this final clip when the polish is wet because it will look nice and smooth before it dries down and I won't have to use top coat to give it that look. But this this still looked lumpy even though it was completely wet. So that is three coats of Hyacinth. The next polish is called Rhiannon and this is described as a vibrant icy blue with micro fine holographic aqua and white glitter. Before I get started here, this was like a body glitter gel consistency. Now the other polishes in this finish are also thick, but this one was so thick. You can see it's like all stuck in the brush and the brush is all splayed out here and it just got worse as I used it. The formula on this is just gross. You can see how much I struggled to get this on and even and like over the whole nail. The brush is just like completely fanned out with it. It's going on lumpy and chunky. I feel like it took a lot of manipulation to even get like a really rough application. I'm so bummed out about these because they're also, the description says like holographic glitter, but I don't feel like they're even sparkly enough to like justify this work. They didn't come off like super sparkly and holographic to me. And I know not everyone's after that look, but they just also looked really dull. Like I don't want to say dollar store polishes, but like that's what they reminded me of. I actually shouldn't say dollar store because you can actually find pretty good stuff at the dollar store. I would say like kids makeup, I guess that's what it reminded me of like a, like a kid's makeup playset kind of polish. This is just like a really genuinely bad polish, which I feel like I don't come across very often. So the second coat did actually cover pretty well, probably because the polish is so thick already, but it was still just rough and thick. And I mean, you can see how this is going on. It's like, it's bad. <laughs> it's just really bad. If they had made these three colors into like a pixie dust formula, I would have lost my mind. They would have been so good. It also just wouldn't dry. I put one coat on my thumb here and this is what it would still do after 35 minutes of swatching other polishes. It just did not dry. And I did that to see how textured it would dry, but I never found out because it never dried. Actually on my swatch wheels for the comparison section, I put two coats on the swatch wheel and I came back five hours later and I could still dent it with my nail. That is two coats of Rhiannon. The next polish is called Violetta, and this is described as a warm violet with microfine holographic aqua and rose gold glitter. The formula on this one was pretty much identical to Hyacinth. It was definitely thicker. I wouldn't consider it too thick, fresh out of the bottle, but it still went on patchy. I feel like I have had so many bad things to say about Zoya in the last year and a half that I'm really bummed out that I have to be so negative here because some of my complaints have been really nitpicky. So I was like, oh, maybe I should like dial it back a little bit and be a little more objective. And then these polishes hit my desk and like they're, they're killing me. I just so wish these had been pixie dust. And I know that it's probably really risky for them to try to put out a textured polish when it seems like that's definitely not a thing anymore. No one else is doing that. I know that I'm like in the minority by really, really loving texture polish and never being able to let that go. But like, is this not also risky? Now this covered better in two coats. I would not consider it full coverage, but after seeing how slow these are to dry, I didn't even want to bother doing a third coat because I would never suggest anyone do a third coat. So this is two coats of Violetta. It's definitely better than Rhiannon, but but still like, damn. The next polish is called Floor and this is described as a fun classic spring pink cream. 
this is redemption. Yes, I think it's super effing lame that the entire second half of this collection is just three pinks because it's like, mm, we don't need any more of those. But the formula on this is fantastic. This was smooth, buttery, like just applies itself, levels out really nicely, very opaque. This easily covered in two coats. It definitely does dry darker than when it's wet, but this is a beautiful, very well-performing pink shade. Thank God. So that is two coats of Floor. The next polish is called Phoebe, and this is described as a mid-tone watermelon cream. This is, again, beautiful, perfect. It goes on very, very smoothly, very easily. Formula feels fantastic. It levels out really nicely, super opaque, even on that first coat. It's very bright, kind of like bordering on neon, covered completely in two coats, and did dry just a little bit darker than when it was wet. So that is two coats of Phoebe. The last polish is called Zaria, and this is described as a deep spring rose pink cream. This is, again, very nice. The formula is fantastic. It's even. It self-levels. This one is very, very opaque on that first coat. Not quite there, but very close. And, of course, this covered easily for me in two coats. Another one that dries just a little darker than when it's wet, but that is normal. So that is two coats of Zaria. Okay, starting out with Hyacinth. So I didn't expect this to kind of turn into a here's some alternatives to this color kind of section, um, but I really can't recommend purchasing Hyacinth, Rhiannon, or Violetta. So this is turning into a like, hey, if you like this, maybe you can try this kind of thing. So granted, I don't know if all of these are still available on the Zoya website. I do know that Zoya tends to keep their stock in for a while, but I don't know if they're all still available. So this is Harper. This is more of a creamy base. It's a more bubblegum pink and it has a nice like iridescent glitter to it. Kind of holographic thing going on as well. This is Hyacinth. This one is Matilda. This is not really comparable because it doesn't have that bigger, chunkier glitter to it, but this is a really beautiful, like, chromey, light pink with a strong gold shimmer to it. Hyacinth again. This is Ginny. This is an ultra pixie dust. I didn't top coat the pixie dust that I did for these comparisons. Um, this is, like, incredibly, incredibly chunky. It has a really large silver holographic to it, and it is the very textured pixie dust, so that's not everybody's cup of tea. This Hyacinth again. This is Binks. This is, did it come out with the same collection as Harper? I don't know. It's very similar to Harper. It's closer in color to Hyacinth, but with the finish that Harper has, so that subtle gold shimmer, that like iridescent and holographic, slightly chunkier glitter, and more of like a creamy solid base. This one is Wanda. This is also a very similar pink, but without the chunkier glitter, and it has a light gold shimmer to it. And then this is Zoe. This is also a pixie dust. This is kind of leaning more coral. It has a really prominent gold shimmer to, like, the lower section, I guess, of the pixie dust, and then also the holographic glitter. This is a regular pixie dust, and then Ginny here is the ultra pixie dust, which has larger glitters, and it's just chunkier. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I'm never going to be over the pixie dust finish. I love those polishes. So no duplicates, some things that are close, and maybe some, like, alternative finishes, because I honestly just don't really care for this finish, even if the formula was good. So for Rhiannon, I have NYX. Oh, here. This is also a pixie dust shade. This is very gray next to all of these like bright watery blue shades. In the bottle it looked like it was going to be a little closer of a comparison, but this is a very like gray blue pixie dust. It is that textured finish and then has a silver like not holographic silver shimmer to it, but it's like a slightly chunkier silver shimmer, which is finally dry after like 24 hours and some top coat. No, it's dry enough. I, I think it's dry. I can't really get a chunk out of it. It just it still feels soft when I press my nail into it, um, but it's not so soft that I can actually get anything out of it. This is Summer. This is kind of a similar color, a little bit of a darker blue. It has a gold shimmer, which actually comes off more green once it's mixed into the blue. It doesn't have the chunky, larger shimmers and glitters to it, but it is kind of a similar color. This is Sparrow. This is also a very similar blue. It's got a smoother, more opaque base to it, very metallic, and then also has the holographic glitter in there. And I mentioned before that, like, these three 
polishes from this collection, they mention holographic glitter in the description, but I don't really see them that, they have very little like actual sparkle to them. This is Bay. This is also a pixie dust. This is a little bit uh, more of a muted blue, I guess, like a slightly more gray blue, not as much as NYX, but, and this has various chunky glitters in, I think I see some gold, silver, and then like blue in it. This is Moshin. This is really more of a topper. I thought of Moshin when I saw Rhiannon in the bottle, so I wanted to swatch it here anyway, but it really does not look similar. This is three coats, but Moshin is a very, very, very light. Sorry, the strings from my hoodie keep smacking the desk. It's a very, very light blue jelly with um, like silver and blue like iridescent kind of, what is it? I can't think of the, oh, little bar glitters. Bar glitters is the word I'm thinking of. So then Rhiannon again, and then this one, more hair. This is Muse, this is a much darker blue. Also has a like greeny gold shimmer to it and then has some other like larger, chunkier glitters to it to give it some extra sparkle, but also has like a, a more solid base color to it. For Violetta, I didn't have anything that was this shade from Zoya that also had some kind of extra element to it. I'm surprised that I didn't, but this is as close as I could get. So this one is Bisu. This one and this one here, Farley, both came out in the same collection, so they are kind of close to each other. I feel like when I put Bisu next to Hyacinth, it seemed too purple, and then when I put it here next to Violetta, it seems too pink. So I wasn't really sure where to put this one. But Bisu is sheer. It's a very light, light pink with a scattered holographic glitter, and Maybe even some like glitters that look like they're kind of similar to what was put in this finish, but just not used the same way, used in a better way, I guess. This is Stevie, this is a pixie dust. Obviously I did not top coat this because I just want to show it in all its glory. This is a more like muted, darker, almost mauve purple with that silver glitter to it. This is Farley, again, pretty much the same finish as this, but I feel like this has much more silver holographic glitter and a slightly more purple base. This is Terra, this is a much warmer purple with a fine gold shimmer to it, none of these um, larger, more glittery, bits. And then this is Patrice, almost looking like taupey neutral next to this, but it's a very light, again, like kind of like pinky mauve shade with a gold shimmer to it. So nothing super close there. So for Fleur, I have two wheels for this one. So this first one here is Sandy. This is a lighter, a little bit creamier, not quite as bright of a pink. This one is Johanna. This is a very bright neon pink, much brighter and lighter. This is Toby, also brighter, leaning a little bit more towards like a Barbie pink kind of shade. And this one is Daisy. This is close. It's just a touch darker and maybe like a little bit warmer, if that makes sense, where Fleur almost looks like it has like a little drop of blue in it. This is Princess. This is a jelly, so it took a few coats to build up to this shade and it still comes off a little bit dustier. This one is Rooney. This is a bit darker. This is Winnie. This is a little bit more red. And then this one here is Eden, which again is close, but it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more muted. Okay, I brought my lights back a little bit because this one's kind kind of blown out. I still think I'll have to adjust it a little. This is Phoebe. Here, here, whatever, we'll get there. So this is Gigi. This is a bit darker and looks kind of red in comparison. This is Janie. This is much more of a neon highlighter pink. This one is Zelda. Again, much lighter of a pink. It's not showing up quite as bright and neon as it is on camera. Again, I'm hoping I can adjust that, but just know that it's probably still not gonna show up exactly right. This is Canna. This looks very close, but it does have like a little bit more of that brighter neon property to it. This is K, which is also very close. It's just a little tiny bit less bright, but very close. Zarya was the one that I feel like I got the closest with multiple shades. So this is Charisma. This is just a little bit darker. This one here is is Karen. This looks very red in comparison, but still kind of close. This one is Christy. This is almost so close that I don't know exactly how to describe it. It almost looks like a little bit more pink versus Zarya looking a little bit more red, but they're very, very close. And then this one is Caprice. This one is also close in the same, the same direction that Christy is, a little bit more pink, but this is three coats on the swatch wheel and it's like not looking great. Looks kind of streaky, so maybe don't do this one. And finally, we have Paris here. This is also a jelly, so it took a few coats to build up to this. They're not the same finish at all. This one is gonna look more squishy in the long run. This is also a bit of a brighter pink. 
This is Ellie. This is much deeper and kind of looking a little purpley in comparison. This one is Kelsey. This is also a little bit more pink versus Zarya looking a little bit more red. These ones are also pretty close, but not as close as Christy was. And then this is Bryn. This is also a bit lighter and more pink. So at this point, I've gone into full detail at how atrocious the first three polishes that I swatched were. So we're just going to pretend that that didn't happen. And Fleur and or Phoebe are going to be my favorites. I like the brighter, lighter pinks a bit better than I like the darker pinks. So it's a toss up between these two. The formula was fantastic on both of them. Like really, really good. Thank God compared to the rest of the collection. But Obviously, the colors are not particularly groundbreaking. I wasn't thrilled to see three so similar pinks as a whole half of this collection, but the formulas are really, really good, and I do like a bright pink and a light pink occasionally, so it's not like the worst thing ever if you don't already have a color like this, just from someone in my position, which has like a lot of duplicates for these colors. It's just kind of lame to see them, but regardless, the formulas were fantastic on these ones. So that is the Zoya Bloom Collection for spring 2024. Again, I will link the Zoya website down below where you guys can check those out. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.